it is defined by using this equation. This spacing of torsional link is not to be confused with the spacing between the longitudinal torsional resistance bar. This spacing refers to the spacing between the longitudinal reinforcement bar, while the spacing for the torsional link is referring to the spacing provided as the shelling also. From the maximum spacing equation here, this is the smaller value of the perimeter divided by 8 or 0.75 effective depth. This effective depth is defined by the centroid depth of the tension reinforcement bar. Based on the amount of reinforcement bar provided, we know that the bottom part of the beam will undergo tensions and the top part of the beam will undergo compression. Assuming the centroid of the sections is the neutral axis of bending, the reinforcement bar below the neutral axis will be considered in tension, while those on top of the centroid axis it will be considered as the compression. Therefore, we need to first identify the locations of the centroid. Based on the previous example and the geometrical property analysis, it is found that the centroid of the sections is 532 mm from the soffit of the beam as indicated here. Next, we need to determine the exact locations of the longitudinal steel bar with the given information of the concrete cover 30, size of the shelling 10 mm, you are able to determine the distance from the soffit as calculated here. If you find it difficult, you may always sketch the diagram for you to work out the solution. Based on the diagram here, four reinforcement bar here are considered in tension, while the other two are in compression. With that, we need to determine the centroid of the four reinforcement bar for us to determine the centroid depth of the section. Finding the average of these two and then minus with 750 mm, you obtain the average centroid area to be 540 mm. This 540 mm is to be multiplied with 0 0.75 times for you to compute the maximum spacing between the torsion links. Next, you will need to use this mu k, which you have calculated previously, divided with 8. The smaller value of the two will be the maximum allowable spacing. This spacing is checked against the spacing provided it is found that the provider spacing is less than the maximum allowable spacing. Therefore, the provider shelling is adequate. Next, we will need to check for the adequacy of the proposed reinforcement under the combined conditions of shear force and torsional load. As you know that, this example is an extension of the previous example which is example 8 on the design of the shear reinforcement. Some of the information needs to be extracted from the example 8. Based on the calculations from the example 8, we know that the shear resistance of the concrete sections is always greater than the shear loads acting on the member. For that, Nominal shear length is provided both at the cracked sections and the uncracked section. With that, we know that the combined equations to be used will be this, which is under the category of minimum reinforcement bar provided. There will be ratios to represent the torsional resistance and also shear resistance. 
the torsional resistance capacity is determined by this equation and the shear resistance of the concrete sections will be dependent on whether it is cracked sections or uncracked section. This will lead to you checking of the sections for the uncracked sections and also cracked sections. Extracting the data from example 8 for the uncracked sections we know that the VED is equals to 254.4 kN while VRDC1 is equals to 331.3 kN. The question gives us the torsional loads equals to 100 kN meter. Now we will need to calculate the torsional resistance of the concrete sections without reinforcement. The equation is given here. First, we need to determine the effective area of the torsional section, which can be determined from the previous calculation steps here. And then we need to determine the design concrete strength of the section. As obtained from the equation here, FCK divided by the partial factor of safety, which is equals to 1.5 you get FCD equals to 26.7. Next, you need to determine the effective thickness of the section. It is estimated by using these equations, dividing the area with this parameter. You obtain the effective thickness of the sections to be 246 mm. Substitute the relevant value into the equations, you obtain the resistance for the torsional load here. With the value obtained here, substitute into the equation here, you get 0 0.77. This number is less than 1.0, which fulfills the limit. And we know that the provided resistance for the combined shear and torsion is adequate at the uncracked section. We will need to do another step for the cracked section. Now your VED will be the V critical, which is this. And VRDC will be due to this, since we are referring to this section. With the value obtained from example 8, substitute the relevant value and also the components for the shear reinforcement, you get the summations equals to 0 0.74. It is again less than 1.0 limit, therefore the proposed reinforcement bar under both shear and torsions is adequate.